Hey, today I thought I'd talk about the, uh, the current state of this game. Uh, I know people have not played it for a long time. I mean, there's obviously a number of reasons for that. You know, the, the game launched in a pretty bad state, uh, especially on PC. The optimization was bad. Uh, and there were a lot of problems and stuff. Uh, they have actually done quite a bit of work on this game. Now, I've covered pretty much everything in the, uh, the patch overviews I've done. I pretty much have covered every major patch. Uh, the only thing I really haven't done extensively is the new missions for the bow, because honestly, the the, the targeting like for the uh, the bow, the aiming is just terrible. I, I don't really care, and especially since you can just use an exploding arrow and just destroy everything instantly. There's no real reason to bother with that. But I, I have covered pretty much every other facet of the game. Overall, I think it's in a pretty good state right now. I, I think it's definitely improving. Uh, apparently there was something, uh, I guess a couple weeks ago, where I guess someone who works at the company was talking about how they want this to be the new DOA5, and I understand people are, are weary about that, but I actually think it, it may be a blessing in disguise. Now, you may remember, uh, I did the, uh, the first three weapons here. I did the first three weapons for the, uh, the first season pass, and, uh, they were a mixed bag. Uh, I think that they were decent, but they, they felt kind of clunky. The sword and hook is, is very clunky to use, uh, like when you use his stun trigger, you have to wait until the enemy is actually stunned before he'll go to the next part of his string, and then the aim or piercers just doesn't really work well with the current you know, way the combat system works. But the second batch of weapons is actually really nice, uh, they actually have some unique things about them, uh, you know, the, the fire dust swords have the little like ignition uh, thing at the end of their flow attack strings, so that's actually pretty nice, it's crazy crowd control. And then uh, I'll play Jotai for a little bit right now. This moveset does a lot of fun, and it actually, it's kind of, they're breaking away from the template of just having things be, you know, animations with different skins. Which, to be fair, has always been a problem with Dynasty Warriors. It wasn't really until, let's say, Dynasty Warrior 7, where that was less of an issue. A lot of the, uh, you know, the weapon tech gimmicks and things like that to set them apart. But when they made the transition to Dynasty Warriors 9, they basically got rid of all of that. So that, on top of all the clones, is what makes this game get pretty tiresome after a while. It's also a really big lack of progression. Like, you can play at level 1, and you can use a bunch of attack speed gems, and that's basically all the progression you'll ever get. <laughs> that doesn't feel right for something that's trying to be an open world game. Uh, there's still not really much merit or value to the open world at all. Have it on nightmare right now, so they're doing their burst thing. You can see how fun he is. He's actually quite fast. I am. I do have an attack speed uh, recipe on right now, but still, he attacks really quickly. I think what needs to be addressed in this game the most at this point is A, the optimization. As you know, I upgraded my computer early in the summer. I actually just finished paying off the bill like uh, a week or two ago. Actually this week. And uh, this game still struggles to run at 60 FPS for me. I have to run it at 900p, and I still have to turn off some settings. I've heard that it's uh, quite a bit better after the last few patches on the PS4 and PS4 Pro, but I can't really speak on that. I think that's what uh, killed this game. I think a lot of people don't understand uh, why this game has so many dislikes on Steam. Obviously, you know, this game was not in the best state when it came out. I don't think anybody can really deny that, even if you're the most hardcore fanboy in existence. <laughs> you can't deny that it launched in a pretty bad state, but basically what happened was uh, when the game first launched, they had, you know, Chinese and basically Mandarin uh, language and text in the game or rather voice acting and text in the game, and for whatever reason, they took it out. 
And basically that pissed off all the, you know, people who play in China and Taiwan and stuff, which is totally understandable. This is a game about Chinese warfare. <laughs> like, I would be pissed too if I lived there and I bought this expecting to be able to play and listen to it in Chinese and then the text just randomly disappears overnight. So basically, uh, all those people review bombed the game. And the thing about Steam is that a game getting rebombed is the review bomb is like just totally catastrophic for a game because even if you completely fix the game, you know, you can make the game free. You know, you could give every person who bought it like a free $20 gift card or a free pizza or something. <laughs> I guarantee you, like 95% of those people would still not change the review to a positive one. So I think that's one of the things that really uh, kind of amplify the negative stigma this game has. I mean, in my case, you know, I like the PC version because I'm able to have fun mods like the PC uh, exclusive Twitch time and the gem editor and stuff, but the game definitely is lacking in endgame content. Uh, you run out of things to unlock really quickly. There are a ridiculous amount of ways to break this game. Like, you could probably come here on, like, normal mode and, uh, basically get more materials than you would ever know what to do with, <laughs> and a bunch of money, and basically just buy overpowered weapons right away. There's a lack of things to do in the open world. I, th I uh, actually talked to the community manager a couple months ago, and I told them that they should add, like, hidden, really powerful accessories that, you know, kind of encourage you to actually go around in the open world and explore it. On the other hand, I think this game actually handles the open world quite well, better than some other games, even far more expensive, like Western AAA ones, because you don't really have to mess with it that much. Once you get a few waypoints and some fast travel points, you very rarely have to go for longer than maybe a minute or two. Yeah, one of the one of the like inherent problems with open world games is that you spend more time wandering around in nothing than you do like actually engaging with the game or interacting with it. I don't really consider walking around in nothing to ever be engaging gameplay. This game is very lax with the uh, the fast travel system. mess over here. People are pretty harsh on the combat as well, and I, I kind of think that's weird because you look at, like, uh, you know, big budget, like, AAA open world games, and the combat is almost always an afterthought, especially anything involving melee combat. Normally what happens is they'll have, like, you know, predominantly ranged character, and the gunplay can be fine, but anything that involves, like, Defending yourself in hand-to-hand -hand combat is usually <laughs> really awful and an afterthought. I think this game, for what it's worth, it has like the best combat in any open world game. And that's saying something. I think it definitely needs work. The movesets are very small. Uh, I think that's one of the things that makes Batik sit in really quickly. Especially since there's no real moveset progression in the slightest. We have everything in level 1. The only thing you can really do is kind of amplify things with levels and stats, which is not terribly interesting. However, we are supposed to be getting both new accessories and something called the growth system uh, sometime during the season. The next season is basically going to end by the end of next month, so we're looking at about a month and a half today. I hope that will help. Alright, I'm gonna back out of here and play Soon John for a little bit. I think it's really interesting how in the, the modern, like, climate of gaming, like, how quickly people can turn on a game, and sometimes it's not always warranted. You know, there are plenty of really bad games that never get fixed and, <laughs> you know, are still sold for $60, or even worse, like, you buy them for $60 and then, you know, they get review bombed for being bad games and then they're $20 in two weeks. Like, <laughs> it happens so often in gaming these days, and I, I think for what it's worth, they have put an exemplary amount of effort into fixing this game. I think it's just what people don't realize is that there's a ton of stuff to fix, and they really didn't launch with that many unique movesets, and the unique movesets that are in the game, um, a lot of them start to blend together after a while, and I think that's one of the biggest issues. I haven't really bothered playing as most of these characters because I played at least one of them 
in the respective clone family. <laughs> like, uh, Guo Jia, for instance, uh, in the Bo Staff clone family, he's like the best character because his stun trigger is like a spin above his head and it allows you to do crazy juggles that the other two clones can't do. So, realistically, there's no real reason to play as the other two unless you're forced to. Now, when you go into the story mode, one of the things that's frustrating is how long you can get stuck playing as a single character. Now, I played this game as Wu first because I wanted to unlock my boy Ling Tong. And I was stuck with Cheng Pu for seven chapters. And I, I can't describe how boring that was. And then I get here, Ling Tong only goes to chapter nine. So even though his moveset is not the greatest, I would have preferred playing him than another Bo Staff clone. But <laughs> you're stuck with him for another five chapters. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why it's imperative that they start decloning characters, and I'm glad that they have definitely put some effort into that this past season. One of the biggest things that leads to the fatigue in this game is how long you have to play as a single character, and then that is like uh, amplified by the fact that you don't really have that many unique movesets to work with. Like here, you can play as Zhou Yu, but I don't remember exactly where his story ends, but... Sooner or later, you're going to be stuck with Juran, and he's like basically one of the only characters you can use. So you've got two basically identical movesets in the same kingdom that you'll play through in the same campaign. It kind of really makes the fatigue set in. I think that's what they need to fix in the next season. Apparently, there's going to be another season after this, which I think is pretty crazy. The support for this game, for what it's worth, has been great. Uh, I think one thing that people neglect to remember is that, you know, A, like I said, the, the combat is better than anything, uh, you know, a modern, like, Western AAA studio can do. <laughs> people conveniently forget that. People like to kind of have selective uh, memory and recognition with this game. I think the combat is fun. It's just it needs more variety and more moves, and they're kind of in a rock and a hard place right now because there's 94 characters in this game. There's, like, maybe... I don't know, like 35 to 40 unique movesets, and there's like not really a whole lot with uh, variety between them. A lot of the stun triggers and stuff function the same, but the foundation for what it's worth is actually very good, and I'm interested to see how they're iterated it. Uh, actually, in the last patch, we got the guard counter, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, in terms of the meta for this, most people don't bother guarding because your, your air dash and your dodge are exponentially better in basically every way. So, I think it's pretty cool that they are actually trying to kind of improve things slowly. It's, just, it's not happening at the speed people want. One of the upsides as well is that this is like one of the, due to the, the negative reception, this is actually one of the few Koei games that you can actually get for relatively cheap uh, if you're playing on console. I've seen it on sale for $20 on various sites. Uh, for the past few months now, basically for like the, the second half of this year, which I, I think is pretty bonkers. If you've ever tried to buy like a Koei game on like, you know, after a year of it being out, like you'll still have times where it'll still be like 40 50 even $60, especially on PC. But I guess due to the, the negative reception this got, a lot of people haven't really been uh, holding on to it or something, so they actually have been dropping the prices. I think now is a pretty good time to step in. Uh, I can't really comment on the performance in terms of on the PC version, not the PC, but the console versions, but I've heard that it's improved a little bit, so I guess that's something. I honestly think the uh, the thing they should have done with this game is to like uh, just swallow their pride and use like Unreal Engine or something. I think that would have fixed a lot of the optimization issues. Whatever new engine they're using, that they've just had a ton of problems optimizing it and. My initial experience with this game was definitely dampened by the fact that I had a pretty good, my last build should have been able to run this game just fine, uh, aside from maybe my CPU was a little bit underpowered for an open world game. But even with this new build, I still struggle to run it in some situations. So I think that's definitely one of the things that uh, has definitely dampened this game as well. So I'm going to play as him for a little bit, and then I'll probably play as Lu Linky with the, uh, the Snake Spear. I've got too much clutter in here. I need to clean this out, but I keep getting lazy and not bother to do it. Now he's pretty interesting because you want to, you want to spec and flow attack with him since he actually has a lot of uh, you know damage off that. It does like crazy damage and it has really big AOE. 
Now, obviously, I'm in Chapter 1 right now, so it doesn't matter too much, but he's going to be the next character I do a uh, Chunu Hefei Castle video with, so I want to make sure that he's well optimized. I think this is one thing that needs to be fixed about this game, is the lore gems are, are cool in practice, but they, uh, it's just really hard to get anything you actually want to use, and I, it, it does kind of increase the replay value. You know, you're always getting new gems, and you may always be just, like, one officer away from getting your optimal, like, wet, like, gem, but the chances are just far too low. There's too many things that can spawn on it, and you have very little control over it. It's actually better to just buy a bunch of materials and just reset the game if you don't get something good, but even that is a pain. Uh, even on a solid state drive, I'm on a solid state drive right now, this game still takes quite a while to load. So that definitely affects things as well. I think that uh, the only real end game gameplay hook there is is the Lord Gems, and it's just far too difficult, borderline impossible, to get something that's optimal. Like, this one is actually pretty decent, but it's only got 3% attack speed and mounted damage, which is completely useless. So, if I'm actually trying to run an optimized build, that's not something I would ever even consider using. This one's actually pretty good. Oh, it was the same one I already had. <laughs> I've been paying attention. Another thing I'd like to see improved is just being able to have the same gem on every officer. I think it's it's really annoying how you have to keep going in and swapping the gems around even though all you've done is just change a single like uh, you know you just change your character and you have to change everything around. It, it gets really tiresome especially when you have a large inventory of them like this. Ah this one's good. Alright finally I get to play. Let's see what he's got on. よい刀なしになろう。行くぞ。敵を残らず打ち払うのだ。こんな風にな。こんな風にな。It's nice that the game is very friendly and it doesn't really force you to grind from scratch. You pretty much can do a new game plus pretty easily. However, I think the issue is A, you run through a lot of the same missions over and over. If you get anything involving True B, it's just a pain in the ass to get through. And also, there's just like not really a whole lot to really gain from playing as another character. It's actually better to just usually play through free mode and just go to the end and just fight the bandits and stuff, which I think is something that needs to be fixed. Now, initially when the game launched, there were a lot of uh, recipes you could get. And like, the re like the scrolls and stuff for these actually used to be useful, but now that they've added the arena, I know a lot of those accessories are better in almost every way, so initially the uh, the incentive to play multiple characters, especially ones that you don't normally play as, was to get these scrolls, but due to the power creep they've introduced, <laughs> a lot of these are basically pointless. So once again, you don't really have a, a lot of incentive to go off the beaten path in this game, unfortunately. Power creep is a problem in pretty much any game that involves like stats and stuff like that, but here it's definitely a, a pretty big issue. I remember struggling to get the best gems through uh, playing through the story mode back when the game came out, and now you can just get lore gems that are leaps and bounds better in every way. The only real advantage to the other gems is basically just the fact that they're not as uh, RNG heavy. 
I think the combat is actually very responsive. You have universal dashing and dodging, canceling, jump canceling as well. You know, people complain about like flowchart kens and stuff on Street Fighter. That's kind of how this game feels. Like, I mean, there's the the combo system is very like flowchart oriented. You know, once you learn how to cancel things, a lot of the, the weapons do function the same, which is why it's nice that this latest batch of DLC weapons actually does kind of break away from that formula. Alright, well this is going to be pretty boring, so I'm going to play as a uh, Blue Linky with a Snake Spear really quick. Just to make this a well-rounded video so you guys get a little snippet of all the gameplay. With the new weapons. I'm interested to see what the growth system and the uh, the new accessories will have. I think they already covered a lot of the bases with the arena accessories, and that was pretty fun. Now I, I pretty much found a way to to break the uh, the arena really quickly, even without witch time. So I got everything pretty quickly, but I think that that was actually some of the best rewards this game has to offer. Like those accessories actually change the way the game is played, make things a little bit more unique. Alright, so let's partially declone her here. Uh, it's not that one, that's the uh, elemental coke straws. Is it this one? Let me see what I've got on her. I haven't run a lightning build in a while. The uh, the, st the launch trigger on the the serpent spear is like really slow, so I'm trying to kind of circumvent that with having some extra attack speed. I assume that running this will be enough to kind of do that, but I'm not quite sure. You can see how just like huge the uh, the spread is on all this stuff. Like, <laughs> some of these would be like almost good, but they all have something that's bad on them. They either have a bad stat roll or a bad stat spread. Like some of them times they'll have like a bunch of really good stuff, and then the rest will be something stupid like one percent attack speed, which is basically useless. I keep seeing one that I want to use and I find out I already have it on. There's so few so few good ones in here. I probably would have to reset or use a gem editor to get something good, which I think is something that they should not encourage. <laughs> like they should be able to like take a gem 
and maybe fuse them together, or maybe you could like compound them or something and like take some of the abilities off them. I think that would make the Lord Gem system a lot better because otherwise you're just endlessly grinding and you may never get something that's like actually optimal. And it's very difficult to have an optimal build in this game due to the way that the Lord Gems work. Like the uh, the stat spreads that they have, uh, like the caps for them, are way better than anything else. So you're completely at the mercy of RNG. The only thing you can really do to kind of get around it is to just get a bunch of the materials and then just craft them in your hideaway and reset if you don't get something good. But obviously not everybody has the patience to do that. So I think that's kind of the, the major issue. But these are all the accessories that came from the arena, and you can see how much these actually changed the game. I think this was definitely a welcome addition, especially since this was free. You may remember the True New Hefe Castle and stuff. Uh, that came from the ordeals, which were the uh, from the hideaway pack. But the arena was free, and they actually put all these in for no cost at all, so I thought it was really awesome. I definitely got a lot of fun out of uh, earning all these. Finally ready. Also, one thing that's underappreciated in this game is how fast the horse can run uh, if you have it maxed out. Uh, this is actually a, a rare maple. Uh, the rare horses actually can get max stats. So, you don't even really have to bother getting red hair. I, I certainly didn't bother doing it. I really didn't want to play through the same missions another th three or four times to get hit him. So, I just went ahead and got a rare one by resetting and then maxed it out. Now, even though the open world is, is devoid of activity or anything of interest, like you actually can't get through pretty quickly. Like, this was about 1,200 meters away or whatever, and I was able to get there pretty quickly. Like, the combat is still satisfying to play, which I think is what's interesting. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I have dabbled in open world games before, you know, at the beginning of last gen, and uh, I can't really recall a single memorable experience. Uh, it's really lagging a lot right now. Oh, <laughs> 
crowd control in this game is definitely really weird. It's not as, you know, like intuitive as it was in the charge system games where you pretty much could just use your, like, C4 or something and just clear everything out. You have to put more thought to it, but it definitely is kind of awkward. Like, you end up using your stun string, stun string for crowd control more than anything else, which is definitely <laughs> not what you're used to if you played a lot of these. Like, simple stuff like just being able to cancel anything, even before the animation actually starts, is what really makes the combat feel responsive. Also, jump canceling as well. You do need to win fire wheels for that, which I think is kind of uh, the final thing I'll talk about that needs to be improved. You have a ridiculous amount of strain on your uh, your inventory or your accessory slots in this game. Now, I am using mods to fix that, but if you're on console, that's obviously not something that's possible. As you can see on here, I have the, the wind fire wheels and the heaven and earth gauntlets and then the fine bag of wind on here to kind of get rid of that so I can actually have more fun with the accessories, but normally... Or actually, no, I have the gold crown on here, but normally I would have all three of them on, which leaves me a whopping one slot to actually put something on I want. Uh, ideally, I think it would be nice if they just made it so you, know, you could complete a quest or a mission or something and maybe have the ability to learn these as innate abilities. Like, maybe just always have the ability to jump cancel out of anything. Or you always have the hyper armor and so on and so forth. That's definitely something that needs to be fixed. I'm actually <laughs> intentionally nerfing myself right now. Like, this combo gem I made my I made with the uh, the editor. Actually, I, I hex edited this one many months ago. This doesn't offer me any like attack advantage at all. It's basically just to have the, the witch time, which is just to make the game more fun. I have like 120 hours in this game, so counters have always felt pretty underwhelming. It's fun to just kind of play it like a bootleg bayonet or something, but this doesn't affect my attack power at all. I just have it like this because there's no room for accessory slots. I think ideally, like I said, they should be able to make those uh, some of those abilities innate ones that you can earn later on, or just increase the accessory slots. Right now, you run out of things to do in this game really quickly. There are 94 characters. Even when you, uh, you know, you discount all the clones, you still have like 30, I think it's probably close to 40 movesets in the game right now. You're going to get bored of the game way before you even see like a third of them. Uh, I have played the majority of the movesets in this game and I kind of felt like I saw everything there was to see in the first like, I don't know, couple hours. It just really isn't much of a gameplay hook. Now, hopefully the growth system and the accessories will fix that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Uh, I talked about some of the things they've changed, some of the things that need to be improved further. And uh, I definitely want to encourage you guys to try the game out. They definitely seem to be wanting to improve this game as much as possible. I'm sure people are wondering, you know, why don't they just put out a Dynasty Warriors 10? They're not really in a position where they can. Uh, they probably spent a ton of money on this game. I'm sure there were investors breathing down their neck to get this out as soon as possible. I mean, in this day and age, you know, the only games that get, like, six-year development cycles are like Rockstar games with like a hundred million dollar budgets and <laughs> really massive marketing budgets and you know they they make sure that every person you know you can't get away from the marketing and that everybody buys them obviously niche Japanese games don't have that luxury I think the the foundation for this game is great and they have definitely made a lot of great strides in improving the overall experience but it's still got a long way to go I don't really think a Dynasty Warriors 10 with uh, still like more, mostly or close to half the cast cloned would really do them any good either. So I'm just glad that they're iterating and improving on this. I'll definitely be updating you guys on when those uh, Season 2 updates drop, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.